Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of McGraw versus McGraw Jr. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. McGraw, after growing up in the foster care system just four months ago, you found the man whom you believe to be your biological father, the defendant, Freeman McGraw Jr. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you've brought him to court in order to prove that he is your father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McGraw, you say that you are not the father of Ms. McGraw and that you've been very forthcoming with her about this fact. You state you are absolutely certain you can't be your father based on the simple truth that you were away on military assignment when her mother conceived. Yes, So, Honor. Ms. McGraw, please tell the court, why do you believe Mr. McGraw Jr. is your biological father? Well, I mean, growing up, I mean, I've always known he was my dad, you know, like my, my grandmother told me, my cousins told me. I've, I have a picture, you know, of my father, you know, growing up. I have my birth certificate, you know, so he was the only person that I've ever known to be my dad. You brought yes. that picture to court? Yes, I did. May I see that? Yes, and I have my birth certificate And as well. you also said he's on your birth certificate? Yes, I have the original. Oh, I'd like to see that. Birth certificate. So this first item of... Evidence is a family photo. That's my mom, that's my dad, and that's my brother here, and then the babies, that's me. So, you know, you can imagine, you know, there's no other way that you know, I can think that someone else is my dad, you know, if I'm presented with a picture, like, hey, this is your father. And then I look on this original birth certificate and I see Freeman McGraw Jr. listed as father. Yes. Mr. McGraw, did you sign the birth certificate? No, Your Honor, I didn't. She signed the birth certificate. Who signed the birth, the birth certificate? certificate? The mother. So you weren't there? Did you know your name was listed? Not, not for a long time, I didn't. Really? Not for a long time. I never, I never saw any other paperwork. I never saw any other uh, 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 birth certificates or anything from the hospital. Now, I took her to the hospital when she was having a baby. I was out in the hallway. And when after she had the baby, I never saw any paperwork. No paperwork was presented to me at all. I mean, I have three kids, and I know that my kid's dad, you know, was there. They said, you know, are you the father? Do you want to sign this birth certificate? You know, I there's never, no way that they cannot right. have you that's sign. Right. You might be correct on that, but I never signed the birth certificate. As a matter of fact, right. you can check the signature. If there's a signature on there, I'm quite sure it's not mine. What in the world? So Take you can signature. falsify documents at the hospital. I did not falsify a document. I see your name. Do you see my signature, Your Honor? But I do not see your signature. Thank you. What this particular birth certificate says is the certification that the information provided in the certificate is the truth to the best of their knowledge and belief. The person that made that statement the signature is your mother's. Right. It's not his signature. So when he says he did not sign the birth certificate, that would be a true statement. Mr. McGraw, in this family photo, you admit that is you. That's me, yes. It looks like a happy family taking a photo. The well, Your Honor, I stepped up, you know, to try to do the right thing because those kids didn't have anything you know, she didn't have anything. And the only person that they knew during that time was me. You admit you were in her life. Yes. And you also admit it was her understanding that you were her biological father. Yes. That's her understanding. That's what mom told her. Uh, that's what her family members told her. But, you know, a uh, few times during the course of our relationship, you know, mother would get angry, you know, and tell me I was not her father. You know? And you didn't uh, ask for a DNA test, Dad? That's what I'm saying. Me? You didn't ask for a DNA test? Like, most people ask. I'm I not going to I did not ask for a DNA test because I was still taking care of you guys. You know? Right, I but if you believed that you were my dad, you know, why didn't you just ask her for, you know, a DNA test versus me having to, to go through what I went through? Like, now that I'm a grown person and I'm sitting there trying to figure out who my dad is, if you believed you were the dad, why didn't you just ask for a DNA test? You know, because, to spare me just Because that your much. mother... Because your mother was uh, something else. She put me through a lot, you know. But each time I wanted to turn around and leave, you know, she would fall down, grab my legs. You know, oh, please don't leave. Please don't leave me. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know. Then I look at these kids because they were very young at the time. 
I stepped up knowing that they wasn't my biological children, but, you know, they needed somebody. You know, and I wanted to be there for Specifically, them. how did you know you were not her biological father? Because presumably you were in a sexual relationship with her mother. Exactly. Yes. We would always go out in the field a lot when I was in the, when I was in the service. We'd go out 30 days, we'd come back for a week, do maintenance, and then go right back out again for another 30 days. Now, the following time that during the, during the time of conception, now when I left, she had had a period. Then when I came back, after them 30 days, she wants to take a, a pregnancy test. And she took it, and I'm like, man, this has got to be crazy, you know? She always had the habit of having, meeting strange people, you know, to bring them in the house, let them live with us and everything, because I'm gone all the time. So when I come home, or oh, she had a family there, you know, and this lady told me, she says, she says, I never met you before, so I didn't know what type of person that you was. So I'm going to tell you that uh, your girlfriend, she's been sleeping with a guy named Bill. Really? Bill. Yes. So I confronted him. Ms. McGraw, I want to know from you, did you ever hear about a guy named Bill? Never. I have never heard of anybody with the name Bill, Bob. I've never heard of anybody else Yana, but him. I confronted this man, and he told me that he didn't want anything to do with her or that child. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Mr. McGraw, yes, sure. clearly you were in her life. At what point did you leave? We went to uh, Detroit. I, I had got out of the service and everything, and I was gonna leave them down there in Georgia. But she begged me, oh, we don't have nowhere to go. You're the only daddy that they know. Oh, please don't leave us. Okay, I brought them with me to Detroit. My mother said, why did you bring that girl there you, when you know that child wasn't yours? I said, Mom, they don't have anywhere else to go. We got, a, got us a house in Detroit. Now, we got into an argument, so, you know, I left him at the house. I went down to see my mom, you know. She called me. She asked me to come, to come back home so we could talk. I said, you know what? I'm tired of going through stuff with you. I don't, I'm, I don't feel like I should come back. Oh, please, please come back. So... I go. Now I go there, she treats me nice, we're sitting there having a nice conversation. All of a sudden, she's knocking on the wall. What are you knocking on the wall for? Oh, it's nothing, I'm just, I'm just doing it. I come to find out, that was a signal for the girl that lived upstairs to call the police. And they arrested me, they put me in handcuffs, they let her go into my pocket, Wait, take me. my keys out of my pocket, take all of my money out of my pocket, and they took me to jail. They did not file any charges on me. What was her motive for doing that? For money. She just wanted the money. They let me out of jail, right? My mom turned her back against me. My brothers and sisters did. They say because you had no business bringing that girl up here knowing that that baby and that little boy was not yours. How old was... Ms. McGraw, when you left? When she was two years old. Very little. Yes. Ms. McGraw, I, I, I know this is hurting you. What do you need to ask the man you believe to be your father? I was told a different story. I was told they fought a lot, and, you know, she was tired of the fighting, and she left. When you're in foster care, you know, and you're two, you know what I mean? You're raised by somebody else's family. You have to grow up with people making fun of you. So, and it makes me angry that he's just making my mom out to be this bad person because the simple fact is he's saying, okay, I'm not the dad. But, you know, it's, if, you, if, if it was so bad in the beginning, why did you even stay? Why did you, you know, like, why, you didn't even think to say, okay, well, you, this could be my child. Why don't I see if this is my kid? You, you know, they just left me. There. Ms. McGraw, while you are in foster care, you're thinking to yourself, why isn't my father coming to get me? Yes, I was wondering where my dad was. You know, you go through something and everybody's like, their dad, their mom, their dad, you know, and I wanted to know where mine was and why my dad didn't come for me. <laughs> Would it come for me while I had to be there and get the, to deal with the kids picking on me? You know, it's, it's, it's hurtful. And so my grandma said, you know, that she would look for him for me, you know, because my whole family knew of him. That's all they knew, my, all my aunt, my... But you my, were in foster care. But I was in foster care, yeah, but my biological family, they weren't far, you know? They all lived, you know, pretty close by, you know? So when I got put in foster care when I was two, apparently she didn't get what she wanted, you know, so they gave us back to the system. 
because she thought she was gonna get a house, she's gonna get a car, and she didn't. So I guess she felt like, okay, well, you know, since I'm not getting this, let me go ahead and, you know, give him back. So they gave us back. And so I had a close relationship with my grandma, you know. I didn't see my mom. I only saw her like twice. And my grandma, you know, she's like, it's gonna be okay. She was like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look for your father for me. But she got hung up with like his mom or somebody's social security number or something where she couldn't find him. So they were like, okay, well, the last place that we knew him to be was in California, you know, and then she passed away. So, you know, I couldn't go from there with anything, you know. Mr. McGraw, did you hear about any of this? Any of this? <gasps> no, ma'am. Did you know no, she was no, in yeah, foster care? No, yeah, no, I did not. Her mom called me when I was in California. She said, I just wanted to uh, just tell you that I'm sorry for all the stuff I've done. I said, now, what about the baby? You gonna tell the baby who her daddy is? When I talked to you on the phone, you didn't say that. I asked you, when we talked on the phone and you asked me when my mom passed I told away, you. I told you that she passed away when I was 12. And then you said, oh, well, you know, she called me. Yes. And you did say she apologized for everything that she did. And yes. I said to you then, because you said, you said you? that you didn't know where I was and that you didn't know what was going on. So I asked you, when I talked to you on the you phone, asked, did you say, well, how is she? Or anything, I asked you, did you ask anything? You said no. Because I asked your mother if she's going to tell you who your father was. You didn't say that. That's yes, not what you told well, me. Well, that's what that's I told, told your told mother. Me. I might have not have told you. And but so that's when, I... when you asked her this question, how did she answer? She told me she would. She said that's, she would. That's all I know. And that's why you never turned back. Yeah. Because that question well, just confirmed that she was not yours. Yes, yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. McGraw, you've brought a witness. I'd like to hear from him. Please stand, sir. State your name. Don Yale Drake. Mr. Drake, you are? Her brother. You're the young man from this picture. Yes. I can see that. <laughs> so do you remember Mr. McGraw in your life? Yes. You do? Yeah. Do you remember hearing that he was your sister's biological father? First of all, like you said, we really didn't have no father figures out there like that. So he was the only one that we knew of. So therefore, when my sister was born, that's all that my mom was talking about, like him being a father. I never heard the bill name. I knew they went through their emotional issues and stuff like that and got into physical, emotional, verbal abuse fights and stuff like that, but never knew the stipulations about what they was arguing for. For him to even say that he wanted to step up and that's the reason why he didn't back down, understood, respect, and I'm a father myself. I take care of kids that's not mine and all that. You know what I'm saying? But, but the relevancy is, like, you have to bring some clarity to somebody some way, somehow. You know what I'm saying? Some people need closure. And this is the gate that's still open. And he moved on with his life never knowing all that your sister went through. Right. Left, he left the doors open. Rather than come to her, you could end up being a man like, hey, yo, I know you, I took care of you, I love you to death. You know what I'm saying? I was there for you and your brother, I did X, X Y, Z. So, Ms. McGraw, what are you hoping for today? I just wanted a relationship with my dad. I grew up without my dad. And I, that's, that's it. You know, I just wanted to, to have that relationship. Everybody has one. I didn't have one. I'm hurt and I'm angry. I'm, I just wanted to be able to say, hi, dad, you know, or call my dad. Like, you know, right now we're okay. You know, when we talk on the phone, he's there, you know, but it's just, I wanted to, I don't want to feel like I'm burdening someone else if he's not my dad. Since he's you're saying not, he's not, not my dad, no, so no, I don't not, want you to feel like I'm burdening no, you or you have to deal with me. You know no, what I mean? No, so that's, that's why I want to know that's for sure if you're my dad, since you're saying you're not, if you're my dad, you know, and I'll be okay. And like I said, I mean, if you're not, I mean, I don't know who this both person is. I never heard of him, so I'm not going to look. It's no point. There's no last name. You know, I'll you know? still be there for you if you let me, you know? I just... I will. I just didn't know all of this was going on during, that, during her life. Nobody contacted me. Nobody said anything. I didn't know anything. So when you spoke to him mm -hmm. and you heard her say, are you my dad? Yes. You knew exactly who she was. Yes. And your answer was? I told her no, and then I started telling her the story of how all of this became. Mr. McGraw, what are your hopes today? Well, hope, hope she can find out the truth today, if I'm her father or not. I have the results for you. Are you ready to hear them? Mm. Jerome? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. 
In the case of McGraw versus McGraw Jr., when it comes to 31-year-old Kiwanaki McGraw, it has been determined by this court. Mr. McGraw, you are not her father. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story I've been trying to tell. I mean, I've, I've been there for her. I still will be there, you know. If she let me. I'm so sorry. I know that is not what you needed to hear. If you let me, I'll be there, okay? <laughs> I you, okay? Nothing's gonna change, all right? Okay? Nothing's gonna change. I'll be there for you anytime you need me. This yes. other gentleman, have you heard of his whereabouts? I'll do whatever I can to help. You know. I was just gonna ask you that. Yes, I was gonna I, say, yes. if she needs your help, if she do, I'll be there. You will help her. Yes. Try to identify this yes. person. Thank you for that. Um. Ms. McGraw, I'm very sorry, but we at least have Mr. McGraw agreeing to help you maybe find that other gentleman if you so choose. <laughs> and we do have counseling for you, and we are here for you if you ever need us again, because we want you to find the closure you so desperately need. I wish you the best of luck. Court is adjourned. Jerome, will you please escort Ms. McGraw up to the bench, please? <laughs> I'd like to put you up here today.